<laughs> you got to do that. Do the Pledge of Allegiance and stuff too, yeah. Yeah, we gotta stand up for that, huh? I just got sad. <laughs> I'll stand. How you doing, buddy? Good morning, good morning, good morning. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Especially to us. Amen. Amen. Please stand this morning. Let's bow our heads real quick so we can go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful to be here in your house, just to be able to come together as one family and, and worship you, Father, to hear your word. We ask that the message that's brought today that, that instructs us, that guides us, and teaches us your ways, Father. Father, give us a... Give us just give us the heart of worship this morning, Father. Who we just sing your praises, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen and amen. All right. We we get the we get the pri uh, privilege of saying the national anthem or the uh, pledge of allegiance this morning. I've been watching too much Olympics. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. You haven't watched the Olympics? All right. Let's put our right hands over our hearts. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And to our Christian flag, I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. And to our Bible, 
I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Amen. Amen. Hey, we're, we're going to do something different today, Bill and I. We're going to sit down. So if you guys want to stand up and, and clap your hands, we'd love that. If you want to sit down and, and, and rest in his presence, you can do that as well, because we're going to. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes and wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to the Sing 
a new song for him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. lightning rolls of thunder blessing and honor strength and glory and power be to you the only wise king and we sing holy 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 is the Lord God almighty who was and is and is to come with all creation I sing praise to the king of kings you are my everything and I will adore you Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Just thank you for you for who you are to us, Father. We just love you. We praise you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Give somebody a hug amen. today. Take somebody's hand. All right. <laughs> that was cool. That was like a moment. <laughs> that was cool. I like playing with you. I do. We need to do this more. <laughs> yeah. All right. We got we got breathe. And then the, and then and the finale. Uh, yep. The finale. <laughs> oh. <laughs>
What's up? God is good? All the time? Especially to us. Amen. Hey, uh, all you people better gathering around that little baby, leave him alone. Mateo says, I'm tired of you guys picking at me. I hope it's uh, Mateo's first time in church, right? Okay. Because if you took him anywhere else first, I would not be happy. Oh, my goodness. It is good to be in God's house with God's people. Amen? It is uh, a lot of stuff always happening around here. Uh, we're excited. As you know, we were gone for the last couple of weeks. Uh, we were in Nashville and, and Memphis before our national convention and went to Nashville. Uh, got to hear some great preaching. Got to hang out with some great people. Uh, but most of, of all, we got to rest. And uh, I was in great need of that. I didn't realize how old I am until this, this year's fireworks stand. Running on eight hours sleep, and I'm so thankful for people like Les and Donovan and other folks that came and hung out, and Nathan and hung out with us. Uh, but uh, I, I caught a head cold like on Monday, and a lot of stuff was going on, and I just was done. And, but I was able to get through all that, and God has uh, rested me, healed me, and restored me. Amen? And... We're excited about being here today. I have not preached since June 27th. I know you guys got out early last week. We're going to make up for it this week. Poor Donovan. So he set the tone, you know, and like, I'm like, I got to get out of here by mid noon, you know, like, that ain't going to happen today. We got too much going on. Hey, but Monday nights, celebrate recovery, seven o'clock every Monday night. It says right back there, only one in three people are here because of drugs and alcohol. There's other hurts, habits, and hangups that you got that you need recovery from. You say, I don't got them? Read First John. All you have to do is read First John. It says, if we say we have no sin, we are what? Liars. And so we know that uh, we have sin in our life. We have hurts, habits, and hangups. We all need recovery. We're all working on some kind of recovery. If not, I met, I met some of you already, and you need to talk to me afterwards. Amen? Uh, excited about that. Tuesday night, we are still in Genesis, but we're getting ready to finish that up. Pastor Bill, it, it, he, I know he scared some of you away because he got so excited that first week that he dumped the whole load on you the first day, and you all are like, <gasps> but we're getting ready to kick off after we get done Genesis. We're going into the book of Revelation, and it is fun. A lot of people get all weird about revelations, and they forget what it says. The very first sentence sets the tone. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ, of things to come. And you want to learn some more stuff? That is where you learn it, in an intimate Bible study, small group setting where you could ask the questions and learn. And so every Tuesday night, we've got a big announcement. we got school coming up. We were going to start on September 7th. Uh, we still have room for about four more students in each class to make it full 10. Uh, right now we're at 16 kids. We're excited. We had a picnic yesterday. Thank you guys all that came out, kind of get the kids there to get a little assessment, see where they're at, see how they bonded together. It was amazing. I didn't realize that when we went out to the playground, there's no shade over that playground. It was 305 degrees. But we had a blast. It was warm, but it was good, and it was a great time, great fellowship. And so if you know anybody that wants to bring their kids to a, a place where it is going to be safe, listen, I don't know if you've listened to the news, and we're going to be talking more of that in my message, but L.A. School District is now mandating the kids have to wear a mask all day and be tested once a week. What? That's what I said. And, and there's a lot of fake news that now, I always want to figure this. Are they going to do a rapid test, or are they going to do the three-day test, and when it comes back three days later, find out one kid's got COVID, now the other one's got to be quarantined? I don't know. But that's their problem, because we're going to be here with our kids. Amen? And we're going to stand on Proverbs 22.6, train up a child the way they should go. When they grow old, they not depart from it. We are going to give them God's word, and we're going to be there doing that. So that's exciting stuff. Oh, and then September 8th, something really big is going to happen. We met with some of the leadership. We're going to start our Wednesday nights back. But we're going to do it a little differently. We're going to have a preaching service on Wednesday nights. 
praise and worship, and a message. We got all these guys that can preach. We got Donovan, Bill, and, and we got Dave, and they want to do series, and they want to so, so we're going to start coming on Wednesday nights uh, starting September 8th and have a preaching service, a worship service, a time of prayer, and just like we do here on Sunday mornings. And we're still going to have our Bible study. We're still going to have our, you know, all that other stuff goes on, but we just think we need to meet in the middle of the week again. It's time to start back. Amen? We'll talk more about your responsibility when we get back to my message. So. But it is good to be, huh? I will feed you. I will feed you. I will t- if you want to come and eat, and, and we'll talk more about that because I'm getting excited about it. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to feed you physically and spiritually. So, but there's a lot of stuff going on, and starting hopefully this next week, we'll be able to get back into uh, our getting our bulletins out. I know I've been slack on that, and I apologize. Uh, that way you have something to take home. You see what's going on and what's happening in the church, all the stuff. You, I am Don. I've been so... Oh, never, <laughs> oh that's uh, Monday night, yeah. So, <laughs> but it is good to be with you guys today, and I'm excited about being here. Uh, I was going to share this one thing with you, and then uh, before we start off, there's been a lot of birthdays, and there's a young lady here. It's one year past her sweet 16. She is 17 years old now. I need her to come up here. I don't know who she is, but she knows. Oh, there she is. Yeah. Has anybody else had a birthday in July that we didn't sing happy birthday to or have one in August? Come on, Jeffrey. Come on. Come on up here. Get these birthday kids up here. Dylan's not here. He has one August 17th. So, Oh, he's old. We've got to help him up. Look at these birthdays. July's. And you, you just had one the other day. We took you out to dinner. I got, we got off the airplane, we came in from Memphis, and we get off, and then all of a sudden, we look over, in the next aisle over, they're getting off from Hawaii, and we met in the middle and got in the van and came home and had dinner, amen? Yes. Today is my baby's birthday. Today is my baby's birthday. And she has been crawling on this stage since before she could walk, and I'm just... Yeah, I just can't even believe it. And she's 17 today, and, you know, she's she's grown up here, and you guys are so much of her family and so much of everybody else, and so I'm so glad that we're here celebrating. That's good stuff right there. I can't wait till we get to do her. You know what I can't wait? It's when I get to do her wedding. (laughs) Watch, Watch you walk her down the aisle. You crying. I'll be crying. I can't wait till we show up at the hospital because she's having that baby. Right? Hey, would you stand with me as we sing happy birthday? And we're instead of trying to say all their names, we're going to say Jesus loves you, okay? And you're going to have somebody start this off because I'm so... All right, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday. Jesus loves you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Might have to give him a second to get back to turn your mics on, huh? Yeah. You guys can sit, stand, but we are going to sing to Jesus. Amen. How's that? There we go. Thank you, Dave. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. 
This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. And I I'm desperate for you. And I I'm lost without you. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. Desperate for you, and I, I'm lost without you. One more time, and I. I'm desperate for you, and I, I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. Yes, Lord. Yes. Cool job. This is a new song for me, but it's an oldie but a goodie for Bill, so I hope you guys enjoy this one. Jesus, Jesus, holy and anointed one, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 
Holy and anointed one, Jesus, 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 Exalted One, Jesus, your name is like honey on my lips, your spirit's like water to my soul, your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I love you, I love you, Jesus, Jesus, holy and anointed one. guys can be seated. Pastor Don, if you would, please. We'll go ahead and dismiss our kids and teens quietly. Thank you. And while you're letting them be dismissed and getting ready for class, if you would turn to Proverbs chapter 23, verse 23. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of stuff going on in this world right now, and uh, a lot of a lot of noise happening. Uh, a lot of things are taking place. And back in June, when I uh, baptized uh, Nathan, I told him that he needed to get ready because he was on a collision collision course with this world. When you decide to make a stand for Jesus and you decide to sell out and to give your life to Christ and really live for Him. Uh, you are about to have a collision with this world, uh, and the devil is going to be upset and mad, and he's going to do everything in his power to trip you up and to, to pull you back down and bring you back to where you once were. Uh, but remember, greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. And we're knowing that God himself is going to oversee us. And, and when I met with Nathan a week afterwards, he goes, we were at the fireworks, and he goes, you're right. It has been crazy how what's been happening, the attacks were on him. And uh, he goes, but I'm glad you gave me scripture and gave me some direction and help. Uh, there's a lot of noise going on in this world, a lot of stuff, and, and people are still living in fear and still worried about that. And uh, I, I, I spent a little bit of time on Facebook, and I probably shouldn't spend so much time. I've been cutting it way back. Uh, somebody asked, call, I've gotten three phone calls. says, hey, when are you going to start doing your everyday devotion again? So uh, after three phone calls, I said, okay, it, it must be something I need to start doing. So uh, especially when there are people from out of state and, and up north, uh, Tom Bivier, a lot of you guys don't know him, but he, uh, he has the house right up on the street from our house here in Lake Isabella. And he goes, I want you to know something. So I've learned more in five months because of your everyday teaching than I would learned five and a half years of being a Christian. And I'm like, whoa, Tom, that's, that's heavy. He goes, no, you, he said, you got me through some dark spots during this when he got COVID and all that stuff. And, and, uh, and I said, well, I, I appreciate that. And he says, now, I said, my buddies want to know, where's that guy you told us to listen to at? Why is he not? I'm like, oh, man. So uh, I'm going to start back up tomorrow. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. And, and, uh, and I know where I'm going. I want to go back into the book of Acts and start because that's the book of action. That's the church and its beginning. And we're going to just go get through what we can, uh, you know, while we go verse by verse through it. Uh, it's not an easy task, and, uh, but it's one of my favorite books. But I get hammered a lot by Facebook. They tell me they will block my stuff because it is not true. The fact checkers. The fact. Uh, 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 oh, I can throw it a little. Yeah. That's right. But 
they tell me it's not true. And so I tell them this is the truth right here. If we want to stand on anything, it's the Word of God. And if we want to check anything by that, it's the Word of God. And we want to check everything by the Word of God and make sure we're lining up to the Word of God because the Holy Spirit was given a job. His job was to lead us and teach us and to train us and to show us. And one thing he could never do is lead us contrary to the Word of God. And so I want to make sure we are fact-checking. Not fat-checking, but fact, F-A-C-T. And so what I titled this message is Truth. Because there is a lot of lies out there, a lot of crazy. I love it, me and my wife have been walking uh, on a regular basis, and, and we go by this one place, and uh, I love the sign. It says, Trump won. Dude, get over it. It's over by now, okay? I know, Trump won. Okay. There's a lot of conspiracy theories out there, and the fact is this. Maybe he did, but he's not president right now, okay? And I'm not going to worry about it because, again, my job as a Christian is to do what it tells us in, in Timothy, is to pray for those who have authority over My job is to pray for everybody that steps into that position of authority. And I am to pray for my president, whether I agree with him or not, or I like him or not. But I have been required by God to do this. And that's the truth. Whether I appreciate him or I don't appreciate him. But in Proverbs 23, it's a strange verse. 23, 23, it says this. Get the truth and never sell it. Also get wisdom, discipline, and good judgment. Whoa. Wait a minute. Get the truth and never sell it. Also get wisdom, discipline, and good judgment. But I really like the verse before that. Verse 22. Listen to your father. I'm talking our Heavenly Father, amen? This book is about wisdom. Who gave you life, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Get the truth and never sell it. Also get wisdom, discipline, and good judgment. We just lined up with that right there. We would get the truth. And if you lack wisdom, the Bible says very easy to get wisdom. It says ask God. But to do that, you've got to become disciplined. And then you have good judgment. See, everything is, I can do whatever I want, but not everything's powerful for me doing it. Amen? That's what the Bible says. So let's pray. Let's see if I can make sense out of this message. And hopefully I don't keep you here for a week. Because it has been since June 27th. I've looked at it. That's the last time I spoke. And I've heard a lot of messages, some great messages. And now I'm just excited. And uh, let's see if we can't get this wrapped up in a short time for you guys. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your word, your, your, your love, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you more for our brothers and sisters who have come out this morning to, to hear what you have to say today. Not me, not my opinion, not my thought, but thus saith the Lord. Now, Father, I ask you for being with Bobby. Uh, you know, his son was in a car accident, and, and, and he's there at the hospital with him. I ask you to overshadow him, cover him, protect him. Uh, be with each nurse, each doctor who comes in contact with him. You put your hand upon him, bring him quick recovery and quick healing. But, Father, right now, for your word, let it be alive and powerful. Let it do just what you intend for it to do, because you tell us in your word it will never come back void. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Truth is in short supply in this world right now. But the word of God is the only thing that's the real truth. This is it right here. It is alive and well if we get into it. Uh, there's a lot of things, you know, to get wisdom, you've got to go through some things. Uh, you can get a lot of book knowledge and get smart, but not have much wisdom. Uh, you can get instructions, and it can help. I, I love Ikea. Anybody love Ikea? I love their instructions. I wish they'd have had those when my kids were little. The pictures, right? There's no words. Pictures tells a thousand words, right? Uh, I would have probably put the bikes together right if I'd have had just pictures, Dino. Instead of leaving those bolts out and the kids falling off them, and they're like, what happened, Dad? Now you know what's wrong with my kids, all right? No. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, you know. That's for parts for later. But the thing is this. Instructions are important, and God's given us a book full of them. You know what they say, the Bible is basic instruction before leaving earth. You know, it's a, but listen, no matter what we do, we need to hold on to the truth. And that truth is the Word of God. That truth is God's true Word. In, in John chapter 17, verse 17, it says this. 
make them holy, or in King James, sanctified by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. And if we need anything in this world right now, we need God's word. We need to stand upon God's word. We need to know God's word is real. God's word is alive. God's word is powerful. God's word will not come back void. God's word will do just exactly what he intended to do through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, there's a lot of good history in this. There's a lot of good stories in this. But the most important thing, this thing is alive. Uh, I was asked a long time ago, uh, what version Bible, and, and I, I, I love this, says, I, I, what version Bible do you like? And, you know, I, I cut my teeth on King James, and that's when I say that I spent a lot of years reading the King James, and I went to the New King James, and I, I kind of used the New Living Translation, but I used to joke, it says, I like the Amplified Bible. I like the Living Bible. They said, Amplified? Yeah, I, I, when I preach it, I get real loud and excited about God's Word. And, and, and I like the Living Bible because it's alive, and it's there for everybody. And then I just like the good old King James because it messes me up and I'm dyslexic and I can't read it. So I tell people I'm bilingual. I, I will read this, but I'll quote King James as I'm trying to read it. My mind's messed up that way. But it's the Word of God that we can find real truth. It's the Word of God that I must dig into. It's the Word of God where I'll find the directions for life. It's the Word of God that will give me strength when I'm struggling. It's the Word of God that will help me. And listen. It's the Word of God that I have to go back to when his knuckleheads tell me that what I put down was not the truth. So now I post things like this. Can you please and see, check this and make sure it's real? Looking for fact checkers to help me out. And then if they don't say that, then I, get, I repost this. This must be real because the fact checkers did not take it down. Are you willing? Are you willing to open God's Word up daily? I know. I know it's hard sometimes to get in the habit, but that's where the discipline comes in. Are you willing just to take, and you say, well, I, I really don't have the time. Well, we have all kinds of little tools back there. We have the, that little daily bread where you can just get a little story and a scripture. You know, they say an apple a day will keep the doctor away. I have something much better. A verse a day will keep the devil away. Amen? Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Amen? <laughs> We are in a collision course with this world. And listen, if we don't understand it, I will talk a little bit about being transformed next week. And, but, but we need to understand that God wants us to, to hear his word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Getting the word of God in us is important. So you could either use your eyes to read it for yourself, or nowadays we can listen to it. Uh, I remember one day we, we went up to a, a church up in Fresno. It was uh, the church up there, and I'm with Nick and Megan and Vicky and, and uh, I hit something because I was using my, my phone to, to uh, read along with the pastor, and all of a sudden he just starts talking in the King James. Like, oh, thou holy God, and have grown. Like, I can't turn it off. I like throw the phone. Like. And to this day, the pastor still says, Hey, are you going to interrupt me again? No, no, no. I says, Come to my church, they'll do it for me. And so I want to read you the story uh, by Dr. William Miller, and uh, it's really pretty intriguing. It's, I don't know if you've ever done anything with Gideons, but uh, they have some great stories about how people have gotten saved through the Gideon Bibles and, and in prison and stuff. But it talks about this. It says, one day a shoemaker in Meshera, a very religious city in the northeastern Iran, brought home, his, home, brought home for his lunch some cheese, which the grocer had wrapped in a page of the New Testament, which he was using as a wrapping paper. After eating his lunch, he picked up the paper, piece of paper, and he read the story of a man who had hired laborers for his vineyard, and at the end of the day, paid all the laborers the same wage, whether they had worked 12 hours or one hour. The shoemaker liked the story, and the next day he went again to the grocery store and bought cheese, asking that it be wrapped in another page of the book. Finally, on the third day, he bought what remained of the New Testament that the store owner was using to wrap his cheese in. He got with his brother, and the two of them went to a missionary who gave them a complete copy and gave them regular instructions in the Word of God. Both men were later baptized and were among the first believers in that city. God's Word is powerful. 
God's word is alive. We got to get God's word in us so we understand what God wants us. Would you look with me at Romans chapter 17, or 7, verse 15? Romans chapter 7, verse 15. And, and this is very familiar if you guys know anything about Romans chapter 7. Paul is struggling with himself. He says, I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. There is an internal battle with us going on, a spiritual battle. And that's the collision with this world. God's called us, and he's wanting us to become what he has for us. And to do that, we must go ahead and surrender to him and allow him. You do that learning what the truth is. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man comes to the Father except through me. And when you think about that, Paul says there's this battle going on. I want to do what's right, but I end up doing what's wrong. Now, am I the only one that said, God, if you get me out of this situation, I'll never do it again, and then about 10 minutes later, I did it again? Some of you guys take a little longer. I'm a quick learner. And so what we understand is that the, the, what's going on is there's this battle, and this battle is real. I deal with it. I found that when I, I get physically exhausted, or if I get sick, uh, I, I feel like I, I, my emotions arise up, and I get very easy to, to weep and to cry, uh, and, and, and God just has a way of cleansing me through all that, that I'm able to give it over to him. But there's times that we yield to whatever we say sick him to. And that, that, that little cartoon where the angel pops up and says, don't do it, and the devil says, it's okay to do it. Guys, that's real. I don't ever see the little angels, but I hear it in my head. Oh, you guys don't listen to hear voices in your head. I know. You're all good. But left to myself, I mess up. That's why I need to be around people. See, God has given us moral compass to give us a reference and a guide. He says it's his word. It's the truth. It's the stuff that he's brought together for us to learn from. Now, when I was in school, I did not like to read. I did not like to study. But when I got right with God, I found out there's some great things that I need to learn. And it's only through the communicating of his word and through the pastor and the foolishness of preaching. And, and, and it says that men must be get saved. But the truth is this. If I will hear God, allow God to work in my life, then things will take difference. So let's look at point one. And let's go back to that. It says, do not sell it in Proverbs 23, 23. What does it mean by do not sell it? I think that we have sold out to some of the lies of this world. We have bartered with God. We bartered with this world. And, and what has happened is, is we, I'm not saying this, I think it's then stand on the street corner and say, Bible for sale, Bible for sale. That's not what it's talking about. I think we have sold out to some almost truth. It's sound godly. And that's why there are so many cults out there, because it sounds godly. It's a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. I think that we have given out to our own lives saying, well, no one really cares about me. No, someone cared enough to die for you. Someone loved you enough that he was willing to go to the cross for you. And no one cares what I do. It doesn't matter what I do because it doesn't matter. I'm not hurting anybody. That's a lie from the devil himself. You are hurting yourself and others around you. There's that internal struggle that we have. I've watched people who have come, get right with God, and start serving God, and then just fall away. And, it, and that's one thing. It breaks my heart more than anything else is see them living for the truth, and then all of a sudden they fall back into the world and start living for the world. And they're drawn away because they feel like, I don't need God in my life right now. Everything's good. Sometimes I think we sell ourselves short from what God really wants for us. That internal war happens. Look at John chapter 4, verse 7 through 15. And it's going to be talking about the Good Samaritan woman. John chapter 4, verses 7 through 15. It says, Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with the Samaritans. He said to Jesus, you are a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for drink? And Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift 
God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you the living water. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said. And this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestors, Jacob, who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and the animals enjoy? And Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this well will soon be thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never thirst again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within, giving them eternal life. I love her answer. Please, sir, the woman says, give me this water. Then I will never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come here to get the water. Now, when you learn the backstory of this, you find this lady is by herself. Normally, the women would go down early together and to gather the water, but she was kind of an outcast. God loves outcasts. God loves us, amen? And she was by herself. And then, you know, if you knew anything, that the rabbis wouldn't be speaking to women at that time, and, and especially all this stuff, you know, there's all these rules they had to keep. But yet, he he's, starts a conversation with her and telling her about the living water that you'll never thirst again. God's word is that. It's fresh. It's new. It's exciting. I love it. It, says, it talks about a bubbling spring. I, I've shared the story about growing up on a dairy, and we had the ponds. I didn't realize what the ponds were. In the summer times, the ponds would get stagnated, and they would have a stench about them, and the, the green growth would go over, and we would spread that stuff away, and we'd swim in it. But a spring or a river is always flowing, and it's always fresh. And that's what God wants to always have flowing. I love to spring up a well in my soul. I've heard that song, Bill? I love that song. But anyway, if you were to read the backstory, you find that she's doing this, and then as you go to the next part of it, he says, hey, woman, where's your husband? And this is where it gets interesting. See, the problem is a lot of us are struggling with is we're not true to ourselves. We're not being truthful to ourselves. And she says, well, I don't have one. And then he goes on and says, oh, yeah, you're living with this guy now. And like, he knew all things about her, like, oh, my gosh. And she dropped her buckets and ran back into town. And she told everybody, and all of a sudden it says they started coming. And it said it looked like the fields were ripe for harvest because all these guys were coming back. Now, I don't know how bad this woman really was, but everybody, when she said, this guy knows all about me, and all the guys were going out to find out what was going on. So what I find out here is that before you can go any further, you've got to be honest with yourself. And that's the problem. We think we're okay part of the time. That's where Paul said, the good that I would that I do not, but the evil I would not that I do. Then he said, it's no longer I, but sin that dwells in me. We have not really come and continue to come. Now, we're going to continue to have some sin in our life. We're never going to become perfect on this side of heaven. I know there's some groups that will tell you you might become that way, but I have been trying to do this for a long time, and I struggle with it. it really big time. But listen, that living water is for everybody. Are you thirsty for the Word of God? You need to be. Look at 1 John chapter 1, verse 14. So the Word became flesh or human and made his home among us, and he was full and unfailing love and faithfulness and we have seen his glory, the glory of the one, of the Father's one and only begotten Son. We need God's word. We need God in our life. We don't need to sell it. We don't give up on it. We don't need to turn it loose, but we need to allow it to, to, to grow in us and to, to continue to be what God wants to be. And then, then I really like this. Look at the Ephesians chapter 4, verses 15, 14 and 15. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 14 and 15. It says, Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown away by every wind of doctrine, of new teaching. See, there's the King James coming out of me here. 
new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever that they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. So we don't want to sell the truth. We want to hold on to it. But if you've got something that's worth having, and it's really good, what do we need to do? We need to share it. And listen, there's no greater joy than sharing God's Word. I'm going to try to close this out with Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. And Jesus came and told his disciples, I have given all authority in heaven and earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them, teach these new disciples to obey all the commandments I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the ages. Now, this is called the Great Commission or the Great Commandment. He's given us direction and guidance. He wants you to share his word. He wants you to hold on to his word, and he wants you to give it out freely. Look at John, 3 John chapter. There's only one chapter there. It's verse 3 and 4. 3 John chapter 3, verse 4. Some of the traveling teachers recently returned and made, very, made me very happy by telling me about your faithfulness that you are living according to the truth. I could have no greater joy than to hear that my children are falling in the truth. Truth is God loves you. Truth is you are worthy. Truth is that God wants to do something through you. Truth is that God wants to use you for his kingdom's sake. Truth is this, that the word of God is true. And it's Jesus, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father except for him. And what we need to do is stand upon the truth, the solid rock. The world is going to tell you you're not worthy. You're worthless. You are not good enough. The world is going to lie to you and continue to tell you that if you continue to do this, it's okay to do that. It's okay to act this way. It's okay to treat people like that. But it's not. God says, I want you to understand the truth is this, is his word. And we need to get into the word of God, understand the word of God, and then develop our relationship with him. And the truth is this. If I did not spend time with God, I would not get to know who God is. Uh, when we were younger in our marriage, I would disappear sometimes for two or three days at a time. And it did not make her very happy. I mean, to the point that she was ready to say, this is it. Now she can't get rid of me. And this is the truth. If I didn't spend time with her, if I didn't show up and, and hang out with her, she would, wouldn't think I loved her. And God's saying, don't you want to spend time with me? Don't you want to know what I want from you? Don't you want to hang out with me? Truth is, I cannot do this without you. You cannot make it on your own without God. See, we are better together, and the things that we need to do and to grow is through the Word of God, and so we need to spend time together. And, and that's why someone said, hey, that firework stand was fun, and the picnic yesterday was fun because there is nothing better than hanging out with God's people. And spending time with God's people. Don't listen to the lies. Is, my time's up. I've been, I've been to those meetings. You only got three to five minutes of. I think I'm over already. That's, is that the second morning or the first morning? <laughs> So today there's collision course right now. Either you're going to stand for God or you're going to fall for the world and the lies of this world. Again, the news, I mean, I do not watch news. I, I've happened to turn it on a little bit today uh, and watch it the last couple of days. But people say, hey, do you know about this? No, I don't watch the news anymore. Did you see that on CNN? No, because I don't want to listen to fake news. You know, there's a lot of conspiracy stuff out there. But you know what? I have not found any conspiracy theories. Here. Now people say, well, it's not real. And that's... Yeah, it is. See, if I stand upon this and I read this and I study this, I'm going to get through this world that I'm in. 
Besides, I'm just passing through. I'm a sojourner. I'm not of this world. I'm in this world, and this is not my home. And the truth is this, that if I don't know what God's Word says, I can't stand on His promises. And if you can't stand on His promise, you'll fall for everything the world comes along that's false and looks good and looks sounds good. And that it's a tempting and it'll draw you and lure you into the world or lure you back into the world. See, God says, I want to give you a life that's more abundant. And that doesn't mean more things. Now, if you need things, come see me. I got them in my garage. My wife, we've been spending more time watching like the, 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 the remodeling shows and the, what's that other show you watch? Uh, Hallmark and Walmart or something like that. I don't know. And I know I know I'm really get exhausted, Keith, when I start watching Walmart shows or Hallmark shows. And I start to cry, like, what the heck's wrong with me? What what are you doing, God? This is not right. I used to cry because I had to sit there through them. Now I cry because like, oh but see, it's the word of God. We need to put it in our softened heart. Have you ever poured water on a rock? I wish I had a rock up here. Yeah, me, yeah. And uh, what it does is just runs off right there. I do have a rock. It says, be still, went through the window. So I pour that water on that rock. It just runs off. Now, if I had my sponge that I was supposed to bring up here, I'd pour it on the sponge, and what does it? It sucks it up. Now, do you want to be a rock or do you want to be a sponge? I want to suck up the Word of God. I want to suck up the love of God. I don't want to suck up God's fellowship and friends. I want to be able to take it in. And then what's good about the sponge, you can squeeze it out, and, and then you get more in it. That rock ain't never going to get nothing but wet or go through that window. So. But the thing is this, when you receive the Word of God, I can't help but want to share the Word of God and talk to people about God and tell what God's doing because His Word is powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. His word is alive. And when I learn to give out his word, it's what I need in my life. There is so much joy of giving the gospel. That's why the Great Commission is like, you don't understand, when when you lead somebody else to the Lord, it's like, wow. It's exciting to share Jesus with him. You know, James says we need to become doers of the word, not hearers only. We need to act upon that. Uh, In James chapter 2, verse 14, it says this. What good is it, my dear friends and sisters, if you say we ha- you have faith, but don't show it in your actions, can that, can that kind of faith save anyone? No. God wants us to be alive and well here on this earth and giving out. Uh, I think when you, you really get to the thinking about this, God's word is what i got to stand upon. Everything else is mere lies. Fact, check this. Lee Strobel did. The verdict decided, demands the evidence. This word right here will change your life. This word will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from this word. It's your choice. Also says, if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. That was Jeannie's favorite quote. Now, she was pretty straightforward with her truth. Sometimes people say, well, I, I don't like the way, the way she said that. That's uh, Well, you might be hurt for a little while with the truth, but she was never going to pamper you with a lie. She was going to be truthful and straight and honest with you and tell you where you stood with God, where you stood with the Word. Guys, it's the Word of God we have to give account for. It's the Word of God. The books will be open, the book of life, and these 66 books all point to one person, Jesus Christ. And when you get to the last chapter, we still win. I, I like what John says in the very last part of that. It says, even come, Jesus, quickly. He wants him to come now. And you know what? The time and the table is set. This world is messed up. Now, I'm going to tell you, the coronavirus is real. I know people have died from it. I know people have gotten it. I know people that have had shots and got it again. And I don't care where you stand, whether you believe it's not or you did get it or you didn't get it. I don't care if you think you should mask up or don't mask up. What I'm saying is, what does God say? He said, I loved you enough that I sent my son. His son said, I loved you enough that I was willing to stretch out my arms and die on a cross for you. I loved you enough that I was buried, but that didn't hold me back. 
I was risen from that. I loved you enough to show you. And then he said, I left, and I sent you forth a helper. That helper's job is to convince you, to comfort you, to convict you, and to recall the words of God. I love you. This book is amazing. When's the last time you got into it for real? Every Tuesday night, we're getting ready to start Revelations. Oh, my goodness. Let's pray. And then uh, will you do your challenge yourself this week? Will you, you pray that God would put somebody on your heart and mind that you could share God's word with? Just share a scripture that you've been reading, uh, your favorite scripture, uh, your, your life verse maybe, uh, and ask God to open the door that you might be able to talk to someone about the word of God. To see, it's the word of God that's going to keep people up at, the, at nighttime. Not thus saith you or thus saith me, but thus saith the Lord. Because the Holy Spirit will get a hold of them. You can tell people, I'm praying for you, and it's a great thing, but you give God's word to those people, and the Holy Spirit will start working on those people. So always try to give the word of God, whether you give them verse and chapter or the address of it, just you can quote it to them. Uh, I know that when I do the grip program in the schools, I, I'm not allowed to, to, to give the, the scripture address, but I quote scripture all the time. And that way they get to know God's word. Let's pray. And then we're going to call Reza and Nancy up. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Father, we just come before you, Lord. We just thank you for your word, the truth. In a world that's full of lies, uh, the news, the media, and all the stuff that's going on. Sometimes it's hard for us to understand who to believe or what to believe. But, Father, you told us we can believe your word, every dot, every tittle, everything in this is true. And this all points to you and your son, Jesus Christ, and the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Father, your word is what we need to look into. It's your word we need to live by. It's your word that we need to stand upon. It's your word that we need to share. Truth is, your word will change us. Truth is, this world is trying to separate us from your word. Now, Father, I ask you right now that you would fall upon this, my brothers and sisters, this time together, that you minister to us, and I ask you to continue to help us and strengthen us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Today is a, is, is a hard day uh, because we're watching one chapter end and one chapter again. I'm going to ask uh, Nancy and Reza if they'd come up. And uh, they're going to be going to be part of a, a relaunch uh, with uh, Pastor James Taylor at the Norwalk Church. So the good thing is they're not going hundreds of miles away. They're not going out of state. They're going to still be close by. And, and another good news is that it is my sister-in-law and brother-in-law, so they can't get rid of me. And, uh, yeah. and, uh, but uh, I got this for you guys, and if you'll show everybody. No, I promise I didn't give a knife. If you... Yeah, and so if you open that up and show them, I, I want them to know something about this stuff right here. Can you guys show them what it is? See, if they ever get confused and they get lost, they can always find their direction back here, right? So you can always find your way back. We we take returns. We're like Walmart. We won't even ask, but but it. In a world that's lost and undone, people need direction. And, and I, I know our tagline is given daily direction for biblical uh, lessons for daily directions. You know, or I can't remember how I said it. My mind's crossed up. But it's, you know, Reza said this a couple of weeks ago that this has been the longest as he's been in one place. Uh, I think he got over, like, the, when we first got to Garden Grove, wasn't much after that, and that's been uh, 16 years. I know. He came down and. We try to get her to come sooner, but she's a little harder headed than Reza. So, but uh, it's been a blessing uh, to, to long, serve alongside with them. And and he came uh, with Pastor Charles. He had done it. This is not his first time to do a launch and stuff. So he has experience, and uh, it's exciting. Uh, it's exciting for what's going to take place. And so we covet your prayers for them. Uh, continue to pray for Nancy and her health and Reza and and the extra work he does. Uh, he's going to be a big asset. I mean, when they get ready to launch, if some of you want to go over and help out, man, I'll lay hands on you, pray for you. 
because we want God's hand upon us. We want God to anoint us. And uh, Reza want to say a few things. So, on a mic, on a mic, 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 mic. Oh, the mic, give him like this. It's an airless mic or wireless, cordless mic. Let's see if I can plug it in without popping everything. Boom. Boy, it works. All right, guys, I just really quickly, you know, uh, a lot of, I know that Pastor Don has mentioned a lot of times, a lot of people don't like change. Uh, they, I don't know, we're afraid of it or, or we just get settled. There's some people in my family, they're extremely afraid of change, and, and they don't like it. They, they like status quo. That's awesome. And then me, I have to admit, it kind of gets me charged up. I, I like change. I like things different. I, I mean, I'm, I'm changing my career at 52 years old, so obviously I like change. I don't like, I don't like leaving a church that I've been a part of for so long. I, I don't like that. I don't like leaving you guys. And, and I'm, I'm going to say... Like I said a couple of weeks ago, it's so much easier knowing that Pastor Don has other people here to lift his arms up, to be his his help and, and be here for them. And you guys are, are a big part of that. And while I do love and respect all of you adults, I, I'm, I just have to say, and I mean this with all respect, I'm, I'm going to miss you kids. I am. You, you junior high, high school kids, you uh, kids that stuck with us after you left high school. Um, That's true. So the times at our house and just hanging out and doing stuff, the, the all-nighters that as I got older became just late-nighters. Um, Some nighters. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> and then... The uh, all-day functions at our house that became, well, come over for a few hours, and instead of smoking something or meats, meats, yeah. or, or barbecuing, we're just going to get pizza from Costco. I mean, it, so uh, it's, I, I do love everybody here, but I, I got to tell you guys, I want you teens to know that I am truly going to miss you guys, um, and I call you teens, I know some of you are Young adults. Or adults now. <laughs> well, to the state you are. I, I don't know. <laughs> All right? That's it. There's a box here for you. It's got uh, Paul prints on it because you guys are making tracks and leaving us. Yes. Yeah, there's cards. I'm trying to get all that. So we're going to have everybody come up in a few minutes. But before that, uh, okay. Kids have a card for you guys. Here you guys go. This is for you guys too. It's too heavy for me to lift up. But you get the card first. Well, I could read that. Same fun as I got. <laughs> yeah, people say, what is it? Uh, do you know with every chapter ending, there's always a new beginning, a new chapter? I would like to introduce to you the folks who are stepping up. And I'm going to hand this to Reza as he passes the baton off to Donovan and Danielle who are going to be taking over for him. Ouch. <laughs> all right. What I want to do now is I want to bring them all four of them down here and let's pray over them. 
and ask God to have their hand upon the new work and on the new beginning of the fresh work that's going to be started. So come on up, guys. Let's pray for them. Put you guys right in the center here. Remember Bobby in your prayers? His son was in a car accident a, a couple weeks ago, and he self-doctored himself. He had a big gash, so he put on some new skin or bandage, and the didn't heal on the out like it's supposed to. It all went inside, so it's pressure on his brain. He's going to have surgery tomorrow morning, so that's why he wasn't here playing drums. He'd been practicing and stuff, so I really remember him. So let's pray for these couples. Uh, like I said, it's a bittersweet. I, we're not saying goodbye. They're just going to be down the street. Uh, they'll be around. They'll be part of because they're part of our, our association. So we'll be doing things with as they relaunch and with their church. We'll be doing things with them. I've known Pastor Taylor for a long time. And uh, like I said, Reza was just a teenager when I met him at Norwalk. Uh, his dad and his mom were there. and His dad was associate pastor and uh, has uh, spent a lot of time with their family. So, Father, we just come before you, Lord. I ask you to continue to put your hand upon Reza and Nancy, as they go to help another pastor, help lift his arm, as they've done for me for so many years, how they were strength and help, and they will bring honor to you, Lord. Now, Father, we send them out, Lord. We ask you to put your hand upon them, uh, spiritual, physical, financial, Lord, that you continue to minister to them and strengthen them. Help them, Father, with this endeavor. And, Lord, as they have passed the baton to Donovan, Danielle, we ask you to fill them with your strength, your direction, your guidance. Help them to become those mentors, just like Reza was and Nancy was, to learn to love these kids as they did, as you do. Father, we ask you as we close out this chapter and we start the new chapter, you have your way and your will. Our whole desire is to be in your will, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. There is cake and coffee and uh, other... Freshman's inside the coffee house. Give some hugs and loves. God bless you guys.